Hey guys, welcome back to Sockets and Sideburns. So today we have a nice little job on the Scenic here. Pretty common on these as well. Rear brake pads and discs. Now this Scenic is a 2012 Scenic 3 1.5 DCI with electronic parking brake. Now this procedure is broadly the same on quite a few Renault models from this era as long as they're also fitted with the electronic parking brake. Megans, Grand Scenics to name a few. You might find though that you have different size pads, discs and hub nuts, things like that. Now, since this Scenic is fitted with an electronic parking brake, we need to rewind the EPB before we can start work by putting it into maintenance mode. This doesn't actually take the piston itself back, we still have to push it back manually. It just rewinds the screw mechanism behind the piston itself. Now apart from a diagnostic tool to place the parking brake into maintenance mode, there are also a few other special tools that we're going to need for this job that might not necessarily be in every toolkit. A T60 socket and a 36mm socket just to name a few. I will leave links in the video description for as much of the stuff I use as possible. So if you're curious about any of the tools or things like that that I'm using, please don't forget to look there. A couple of boring safety warnings. Firstly, everything that we're going to be replacing here, pads and discs, must be done as axle sets, i.e. both sides. When you're cleaning out, no compressed air, no blowing it out. Brake dust can be nasty stuff. You don't want to be putting it up into the air and then breathing it down into your lungs. Just use brake clean. Also, we mustn't get any grease or any lubricants, anything like that, onto the brake pad friction material or they instantly scrap. And as always, guys, gloves and glasses. Right, let's get to it. Right, to start off with, we need to get our backside up in the air. So we'll engage first gear, chock up our front wheels, crack our wheel bolts off a quarter turn. These wheel bolts are 17s. And the other side as well. Right, we'll jack her up now. Support her on axle stands as well. Do the other side. And what I always like to do as well is I will just bring the jack back into contact with where I jacked up from any time that I'm working, just so there's an additional safety on the car, but we really are relying on the axle stands whenever we're going under a vehicle. Never go under a vehicle supported just by a jack. Always use axle stands. You can wheel this under the car if you like, as additional safety, but I've got a jack under there, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna move it out the way. Okay, before we start, it's always best to give your pads and discs, a quick look over, just to gauge any problems you've been having with the braking system. Now, as you can see here, these pads and discs are in pretty bad shape. Uh, the discs are 70% worn on both sides. As you can see, we've got a nice groove in here as well, and a big lip there. And the pads, the outboard pad anyway, on this side is, let's get up on the backing plate there. See how worn down that is. Between three and four mil. MOT failure being 
one and a half, so this one's pretty well worn out. And here on the driver's side, as you can see, the outboard pad here, well, I don't think we need to measure that now, do we? That's literally right down to the backing plate there. The outboard pad here has clearly seized in place. Uh, the most likely cause for that is going to be seized slider pins maybe, or the pad's gonna be seized in the hardware, the clips in here. I guess we'll find out when we take it apart. Now, this is totally my fault for not paying enough attention here and letting these run so low. So obviously this has ruined the disc now. The backing pad has made contact with the disc. You can see this lovely groove here where that's happened. However, in my defense, uh, these discs, as I said, are both 70% worn. Minimum thickness on these is seven mil, starting being eight mil, and these are down to 7.3 now. So they'd never have got through another pad replacement without the disc falling below minimum spec anyway. Uh, also, these pads have only lasted about 20,000 miles, which is obviously not normal. They would have lasted longer if this uh, driver side outboard pad hadn't seized, but as we saw from the other side, not that much longer before they get down to the dangerous one and a half mil. So something is obviously going on here. And this was once again, the missus came home from netball and she just said to me, oh, I can hear her grinding from the back. And I didn't even think, uh, I was looking underneath, didn't even think, but obviously as soon as I saw the fresh groove punched into the disc, I didn't even think it could be the rear pads. These are very suddenly, that outboard pad there has very suddenly disappeared, but I've got to admit, I was not keeping an eye on them anyway. They weren't even an advisory on the last MOT, so something's obviously up. Now, what I think we'll do is we'll go over the left side, the passenger side first in detail to show how the job should go. The procedure is the same on both sides. Uh, then I'll start blazing through the other side once I've done that side. And if I run into any issues on this side, as I'm expecting I will, especially with this pad being seized, then I'll just stop and show you that. Then when the second side's done, I'll show you how to finish up the job pump the brake pedal, take it out of maintenance mode, etc., and do a full check over. Okay, as I said, since this vehicle has an electronic parking brake, we need to place it into maintenance mode so that we can push the pistons back. Uh, this step is not optional. The pistons simply won't go back without doing it and you will damage them if you force it. Now, there are workarounds. Uh, passing 12 volt over the motor terminals directly and winding the handbrake all the way off manually by removing the motor off the caliper. I actually have a video on how to remove the motor on this car and manually release the handbrake, which I'll put a card up on the screen for and a link in the description. I, however, do not recommend you do either of those methods. I recommend you do it the right way using a diagnostic tool. So we'll put the key card in and you'll need a diagnostic tool that can run car service functions on the EPB. I'm using the CR Max here. Go to Renault. Get the VIN. Also, you wanna work quick on these start-stop vehicles because the ignition can go off quite quickly sometimes. So we're going to service and we'll be looking for the electronic parking brake. They're called different things on different scan tools. It's in configure function here and it'll be activate maintenance mode on here. So we'll click that, ignition switch on, it is. Ignition switch on, engine stop. Before running this command, release the parking brake using the manual control or run command release and check that no one is working on the vehicle. This command must be performed before any operation on the braking system, blah, blah, blah. It performs a complete release, which we know. And once you're finished, turn back on the system and deactivate. So it wants us to release the parking brake, which we need to press the pedal for. So it's released. Okay, executing. You can hear the motors running them all the way back. And there you've got stop parking brake fault there. And it just wants us to turn the ignition off now. So we'll pull the key card out. And we'll just exit from the scan tool, turn it off, pull the connection as well, just so it's not draining the car battery. And we can get to work now. 
Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna start with the passenger side. The first thing we need to do is unclip the EPB wiring that's going to the electronic parking brake motor here. Get the wiring harness out from this clip here so we have enough slack to hang the caliper up. You just literally lift this tab up here and it's sort of got some notches like a ratchet that it engages with and that'll come out of there like that. Next, we need to remove the two caliper guide pin bolts here at the top and one here at the bottom. Right, these bolts are 13 millimeter. There is a Torx in them, but I do not advise that you use that unless in dire need. Uh, we also have a 15 millimeter hex on the caliper pin to counter hold. Uh, as is usual with these, you need a slimline spanner to get in there. Here's a snap on and it just is not gonna fit in there. You need a slim line to get in there and counter hold that. You can just about make do with needle nose pliers in an absolute pinch and just watch your um, caliper brake hose there as well. Make sure that you don't come into contact with that as you crack this loose. Get it turning. That uh, caliper brake hose can be very much in the way with these sometimes. You might have to get creative with your solutions for rapid undoing as well as talking. Okay, and with that top one loose, I'll crack the bottom one and run that out completely. Whenever anything's bolted in by more than one thing, I never like to just crack one, take it all the way out get everything loose and then start running your fasteners out. I'll count hold with that 15 again. And this is gonna be my solution on here for all of these. I'm gonna be using a wobble extension with a 30 mil socket to hopefully get around these different obstacles. The EPB motor is also in our way, as is the flexi pipe at the top. Hopefully I can break it loose. Nope. You should use a spanner to get it started. There we go. And then we'll run it out the rest of the way. On the wobble extension. You are not afforded a lot of room in here. Now we can get the top one out. You need the give in that wobble extension to get on here. And obviously we need to be able to torque them when we're done. So we need to be able to get on here with a socket. Now we can remove the caliper. You might find it's a little stiff on there. You can either try and wiggle it off. This one's actually coming. Or if it's a bit stiff, you get a pry bar behind there, pry it forward. Or you might need to stick a screwdriver in between your pad and the caliper there like that and just give it a small push just to push the piston off a smidge. But we can work this one off by hand. There we go. Now what we want to do is either rest or hang this caliper up somewhere so it doesn't stress the brake hose on the flexi. I have got some caliper hanging hooks. I will leave a link in the description for these. Go. Now, normally you could remove the pads at this point. However, with these pads in these clips, you can see it's very difficult. The pad ears won't pass by easily without damaging the springs on the clips. I don't think this pad and clip combination is right. There are two brake pad kits for these, and these aren't the right clips for these pads. If you had the right pads for these clips, they have a big cutout on the ear to make it easier to pass them out. 
but those are for the Grand Scenics. The pad selection on these is a bit of a minefield, but I have got the original part number, so we should be fine. I honestly wonder if the design was upgraded at some point or something. We'll get to that later over at the bench. Now, as it is, we have limited clearance and we will need to be super careful pulling them out if we wanted to save them. If someone has done this on your car like they have here and you wanted to save these clips, then you would have to be very careful. That being said, we should be changing these clips anyway, as I'm going to, and the new pads usually come with them. I'm just going to get them out with the bracket off as I don't need to save these clips, so I'll just be ramming them out. But if you aren't changing the clips and you do need to save them, please be super careful when you get them out. Doing it with the bracket off is the best way as it improves access. If you have the clips without the springs, you can take the pads out now or after you remove the bracket. And while we're here, we'll just give our slide pins a quick check. These have to slide for proper caliper function, very important. And these are both moving free and nice. I didn't really expect any problems with those on this side. Okay, next up is the caliper bracket held in by two T60 Torx bolts here and here. Uh, before you try to loosen these, make sure you've scraped out any mud and crud out of the recesses in here as these will probably be stuck tight in there and you wanna get as good an engagement as possible. Just make sure that your socket is able to butt all the way down into the fastener. Again, we'll crack each one loose and then run them out. Okay, got that one moving. Hit the bottom one. Make sure you're all the way in. See if we can't get that by hand now. <laughs> no chance. I have a grown board waiting for that. There we go. Now grab the other one. Just hold on to our caliper bracket as we do so. Remove this. And I'll just push these pads out the bracket now. Like I said, I don't need to be careful about it. Okay, now I need to get the center dust cap out that's protecting the axle nut. Now, how careful you need to be when doing this depends on whether you got a new cap with your new brake disc or not. Uh, we'll run over parts and options and pricing, etc. over at the bench in a moment, but I know I don't have a new one, so I'll be removing it carefully. Uh, the only way to really get it out is a chisel, cold chisel or a flat blade screwdriver and get in behind this and work it out and then knock it off. So I'm just gonna start from here and just try and head in behind there. You see now we're behind it and we'll just give it a bit of a 180. Just get behind to the other side and just anywhere else that we're not quite got the same amount spaced off. And then get something a bit wider bladed and a little trick. If you, this handle might be a bit big, but if you pry just like that with nothing there, it's not as effective. If you put just a hammer handle or something like that behind it, you get a lot more effect. And there we go. One dust cap, undamaged. Now we can see the axle nut or hub nut, whatever you want to call it. Now this is going to be super tight, torque to 280 nm. Uh, if you don't have an impact and are doing this with a breaker bar, 
then be careful, watch your back and make sure the car is well supported and keep an eye out for any movement. Uh, if you are worried about doing that, then what you can actually do is break this loose at the start of the job. You jack the car up, take the wheel off, knock out the center cap on the wheel, then take the hub cover off, refit the wheel, lower to the ground, and you can crack the hub nut loose through there, uh, just a quarter turn, and then crack on. Now, as for me, I'm going to get big red, and this is a 36 mil. trying to run away on us. Now the brake disc should just slide off the stub axle like this one is going to. Now if it doesn't, you might need to get yourself a hammer with some heft and hit round here around the top hat area until it shocks it loose. You can also hit round the back of the disc, but if you do that, just be careful that it doesn't shatter. And obviously if you're gonna do that, you're absolutely gonna have to replace the disc as well. Now if all of that should fail, if uh, just beating it fails, then it's uh, gonna have to be a hub puller to get this off. Now let me just go and see if the one that I've got will fit. It's tight, but it's on there. Let's see if we can get two. Yep, and are we clear at the bottom? Yep, so that would fit on there. I will leave a link in the description for that. Right, so we've got it easy. We can just pull that disc off the stub axle there. Right, now I'm going to push the piston back. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna clean the face up a little bit. Better to do it now while it's still nicely away from the boot. It's a good time to inspect your pistons as well. This one looks absolutely fine. This caliper was actually replaced at some point in the recent past, not by me though. So it's pretty much no chance of season up at this point. And we can see there's no signs of rust and corrosion down here. So the first thing I'll do, just get this off this caliper hook and bring it forward now. Leave that there ready. Okay, give this a scrub up. You can do the face with a wire brush. That's of no concern. Okay, that looks good now. Pass this caliper hook through the bolt hole there. I'll hold it nicely. Now these pistons, they just push back like the front ones would do. Uh, once the EPB is in maintenance mode, you don't need to turn them. They'll just push back into their bore, not like the um, where you have the handbrake actuators on the calipers and they turn out. So you'll see a lot online uh, if you look about opening the bleed nipple when pushing the piston back two reasons are given for this It protects the master cylinder seals apparently and it stops old brake fluid being pushed back up the line And you get mo the most cooked up used up fluid straight out that bleed nipple when you push the piston back Another reason that I can add is it just keeps your bleeder regularly moving and free maybe preventing seizing uh, It's up to you if you want to do it that way or not Sometimes I do it sometimes I don't uh, just a word of caution though, if you are planning on doing that, do not clamp the flexi line here. Uh, if they're original, and I'm guessing most aftermarket as well, they're actually steel braided here, they're not just normal rubber. Here's a magnet in the bottom of this torch. You see, that's actually being attracted to that. That's just a steel braided line coated, so you can't be clamping that. You should also know that Renault's own manual for this car does not say you need to open the bleeder and a lot of people who do brake jobs daily don't bother. So make your own choice. Okay, so before we push the piston back, we just need to take off our brake fluid master cylinder cap and then have a look at it. If it's close to the top, there's a chance that it might overflow because, sorry about the wind whistle there, it's literally Storm Force 10 outside and the garage door makes a whistle. But basically, if this is near the top, as you push that piston back, the fluid's gotta go somewhere and it's gonna rise in the master cylinder here. And brake fluid is a very effective paint stripper. You don't want this going anywhere that it shouldn't. 
So if it's near to the top like that, grab yourself a pipette or something just so that you can suck just a little bit out, bring it down because the only way it's going to go now is up and as it drips do not let it go anywhere except into the base to there and then bring that down to a more acceptable level so you know it won't overflow as you push the piston back and what you can do is just cover it with something like a rag there just to prevent any debris going in and if it does overflow and you haven't got enough out at least it'll be caught somewhat by that rag. Okay, so I have this fancy tool to push the piston back with. There are much cheaper ones available that you just screw in. I'll leave a link in the description to some. Right, I'll just stick an old brake pad in here if there's the clearance to then get in there as well. We'll see. I'm not sure there is gonna be. No, we'll have to try and get on the ears as it is on the caliper. I think we'll be okay. If we go central and we just want to go in nice and slow and steady. Not pushing in crazy fast. Slow. That's it. And what you do also want to just check quick, just make sure where you push the piston in that your boot has not puffed up anywhere around here. Otherwise, if it has, if you've got it sort of puffed up, it'll be obvious, it'll be different to anywhere else around on the boot. And you'll just need to either, you can just sometimes pull them back to let the air out that's got behind there that's puffing it up. Or you need to be really careful. I've got a little set of O-ring picks, which work great for this because they won't split the rubber. But you can use a pick as well, just be very careful not to damage the dust boot. And just pull that back slightly and let the air out. You'll hear a little hiss when it comes out. But do not refit the pads and uh, pump the piston out and everything. If you've got that boot swelled up like that, you need to let that air out. Okay, next step is cleaning. Since we're over here, we might as well do the caliper and the hub mount first. However, if you don't have a vise or something to mount the caliper bracket in, then best to do that part first in here. It's the easiest way. If you just remount it onto the car, then you're not just dirtying up everything you've already cleaned. You remount it now, it'll be nice and fixed if you haven't got a vise. Clean it off here, take it off when it's clean, and then you can start cleaning here. Right, first I'm gonna clean the caliper up. We just wanna remove all the rust and crud from these ears here that grip on the outboard pad. Obviously we've already done the piston face. Just grab a wire brush, get in here. Oh, and it's a good idea, stick yourself a little bit of cardboard underneath the car. Probably should have done this earlier actually, because so much mud and stuff falls off. This makes it easier to clean up and obviously when you're going to be spraying brake clean in a minute this will give it something to soak into unless you want to put a drain pan under there. And we're just making sure we're taking off the worst. Make sure these are nice and flat, these ears in here. These don't usually get too bad. It's the bracket that just picks up the absolute worst of it. Try not to breathe too much of this in either if you can. Those are nice and flat. There's no big lumps of anything in there now. Right, now we need to clean the stub axle and the mounting face on the car, the hub mounting face here. Now it's this sort of shoulder here that the bearing will be sitting against. It will come onto the stub axle, ride on here. Obviously the axle nut goes down here and it'll be sitting up against this sort of shoulder here. So this bit here, this face needs to be spotless and flat. 
I can't overemphasize this enough. Even something small here, like a grain, like literally the size of a grain of sand, will cause your disc not to be dead on flat. Basically, you're going to give yourself run out from day one. So this is the main priority here, but since the ABS ring will also sit in here, this all needs to be clean in here as well. Just watch out for your ABS sensor. Don't contact that there. Just be mindful of that and come all around here and clean all this up. I'll just give this a quick rub over with some scotch cloth. Just to make absolutely sure. And the stub axle as well. Just polish our shaft. That's how you want that there, nice, shiny, and flat. And lastly, and this does get forgotten, make sure that the mounting faces here, where the caliper bracket is gonna go up against, make sure they're nice and clean and flat as well. Same deal as where with your brake disc gonna sit, you want everything dead on here. You don't want anything spacing them off at an angle. Make sure they're completely flat and shiny. And I'll just run through the bolt holes here quick. These aren't threaded, it's the caliper bracket that's threaded, but just in case there's any gunk in here, you wouldn't want that. I'm just gonna use this uh, silver line brush attachment for the drill, link in the description. I'll be using it on the caliper bracket itself as well. Not gonna take any material away, just cleaning it out with a basically a wire brush on steroids. And lastly, we'll just give everything a spray down with brake clean. This will just do a final cleaning. And also as we've scraped off higher than where we've cleaned before, it's just, just unavoidable really. We've ended up with some particles, bits of dust back on areas. This will wash it all down, make sure we get it all off. Put a drain pan under there and I'll try and make sure that I'm spraying down so everything's coming off and have a rag handy as well, just to wipe over. This will just, everything is loose on here now, so it'll just all fall off. Here's our rag of choice for this one. Just came out the rag bag, My Little Pony. All right, do the caliper first. And then the face going from the top down. That should wash off any pieces that manage to make their way back onto there. We'll get that dry off with the rag. All right, now we can move over to the bench. Okay, to get these clips out, sometimes they'll just pull out. Sometimes you'll need a screwdriver under them 
to leave them out. Okay, so the first step for cleaning with this, just get a wire brush, give the whole thing a good clean down, get loose dirt and uh, any flaky rust off of it. Just watch your caliper guide pin boots here. Don't run over them with the, the wire brush. Just looking to get the worst of the flakiness off really with this. All right, that's good. Now there's some specific areas to pay attention to and get very clean. Okay, so the main areas of cleaning on here are gonna be where the pad clips sit in here, where they sit down on the caliper bracket. These areas need to be absolutely spotless or completely free of rust. Basically, any rust in here that's pinching and as it builds up too, we'll get to the greasing later, but that's gonna be pinching these clips, which will pinch on the ears of the pads, which will cause them to bind up in the caliper bracket. And then you'll have uh, your brakes sticking on and they won't last anywhere near as long as they should do. So we need to get this completely back to shiny in here and on the top as well. Other area will be, again, as with the car, we just want this area here where, the, where we're bolting the caliper bracket up with, this needs to be spotless. It pretty much is already anyway, but that needs to be nice and flat too. And we'll obviously run the drill brush attachment through the bolt holes as well, just to give them a clean up. Now, if everyone's screaming currently at their phone screen, laptop screen about the slide pins, of course I haven't forgotten, we'll pop these out at the end and give their bores a clean. And then uh, we'll clean them down and grease them up as we start to grease up the rest of the caliper bracket after we've had a look at our parts. So first things first, we'll get these cleaned down the clip areas clean down and shiny. Right, so I'll start off with these. The best thing for these really is a shot blast to get them right back to bare metal. Obviously I don't have a shot, but this is a small garage in here. Uh, I don't have a shot blast cabinet in here. I'll start with the wire brush just to get most of the loose stuff off, but we are not looking to just essentially polish this rust up. This needs to be back down to the metal. We don't want to take any material off, but we've got to get back down to that metal. Right, so as you can see, that hasn't actually just wire brushing it. We've still got rust in there. So our only option now is to get a nice flat file. It's got to be flat, bear in mind. And we're just going to, we are not looking to take away any material. We're just going to get rid of this rust in here. and go back down to bare metal. The more effort you put in now on this part of the job, the better your results will be and the longer these break pads and discs will last for you. As you can see, it's not like we're taking any material off here. We're literally just removing that rust. You can't see, we're not making chips. Nothing's just falling away from the bracket here. We are literally just taking ourselves down. This is taking off nothing at all. We're just taking ourselves back down to the actual original seats. 
for those clips, which is what we want. And then what you can also do real quick, this is just where the, in here is just where the clips on the clips, <laughs> the little tangs are gonna sit into. Just make sure that's cleared out of any muck and mud, just so they can actually get in there and engage. All right, I think that is as good as we will get it just with a file. Like I said, the true way to get these perfect is uh, shot blast, grip blast them. But we don't have that kind of equipment here. That's a damn sight better than what you would get with a wire brush on there. You could keep going until it was completely bare, but that is, that is metal now. There's no high points of rust on there. We've cleaned it all off. Just give this a quick dose with some brake clean. I'm just gonna move you guys back because I do not want the camera lens to get a liberal dosing here. There we go, that's much better. Now I'm just gonna do the other side off camera, but you've seen what was going on here. Just repeat that on the top ones. Deal with the bolt holes next. Just run my drill brush through it as I said. Clean those threads out, nice and clean. Do the other one. And then, get these faces nicely cleaned up. Pretty flat to begin with. Certainly won't need a file on these. There's nothing loose, so no wire brush. We'll just give them a going over. with a bit of scotch pad, just blast that out. Flip this round, do the other one. And just blast that out. Right, now, we deal with the caliper pins. So the first thing we want to do here is check these boots, make sure they're not split. Obviously that they're moving freely, but we checked that earlier. If these are seized, you won't get proper caliper function. So if these boots are split, water will get in here, wash the grease out, and they will eventually seize. So if you need to replace these, you can go to, the best place I've found is a site called Brake Parts International. Just Google that and then you can find the part number for your car. And actually, if you go to eBay, typically their prices are cheaper on eBay than they are on their website. Uh, I'll leave a link for the ones for this caliper bracket in the description if you wanted to get new ones. So what I'll do, we'll just pull these out for now and we can wipe the old grease from the pin and give it a good inspection and it looks literally brand new. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want to see in there. No corrosion, no pitting, nothing to indicate that it's been bound up or under any wear or strain. And the boot is perfectly intact and nice and supple as well. It's still moving good. Clean those up and set them to the side for now. Get the other one. We'll grease them up when we fit the clips. We'll do all the greasing on the caliper bracket then. And again, this one 
absolutely perfect. As I said, this caliper was new. Whether the slide pins would have been replaced is anyone's guess. I guess we'll have a see on the other side whether they did that or not. And the next thing I like to do, last thing, we'll get into these bores where the pins slide. Just give them a square out with brake clean first. Get that in there. And then, again with my little brush attachment, this is the nylon brush that's going in there. I'm just gonna put that in there. You can use a bottle brush as well. As I said, I will leave a link for this kit in the description. And we'll just give that a nice clean down. Not much in there to be honest anyway. And then another blast out with brake clean. So next we'll be greasing up and fitting new parts. So we'll take a look at the parts we've got now. Right, now that we need to start fitting new parts, I just want to say a quick word on these. The brake discs can be very pricey. We're talking £100 plus for some brands. Now the reason being is that the rear wheel bearing is part of the disc. Personally, I hate this design. Why put a component that rarely wears out into one that is guaranteed to do so? Now you can find discs that come without bearings and without ABS rings. Uh, I recommend you find one that comes with the bearing as the ones that don't are hardly any cheaper and you may actually find that they're more expensive. You want one that comes with the wheel bearing at the very least and ideally the ABS ring, although you can swap them over from your old discs. Now I doubt many people are going to want to swap the rings over, but I tell you what, I will show you at the end of the video how to do that as a bit of bonus content, so stick around. Now also a replacement hub nut and dust cap is nice too. The hub nut needs to be replaced every time it's disturbed. So if your discs don't come with one, you need to find it elsewhere. The hub cap you can usually get away with. So the cheapest ones I could find were Ica ones from Halfords. These were only a little north of 40 quid, I believe. I'll leave a link to these in the description. Now they do come with the bearing and ABS ring already fitted in there. Although for some reason, they give you an instruction on how to remove and refit your ABS ring. Don't do that because as you can see, it's already on here. Now, while we're on the subject of ABS rings, I always like to check over the ring before I go ahead and fit the discs because there's nothing worse than fitting one and instantly getting an ABS fault because it has a flaw in it or it was damaged in transit or something. So the way I do that is with one of these magnetic field viewers and they just basically show up magnetic fields. So if we place it on the ring, on the back, we can see all these segments here that the ABS sensor is reading. And all we're basically looking for is all these segments to be uniform with no obvious breaks in them or segments missing, anything like that. This way we can be sure that we're fitting a good ABS ring onto the car. I'll leave a link for one of these in the description as well. Unfortunately, what these discs did not come with was a new hub nut, axle nut or dust cap. Now you must replace the hub nut each time you disturb it, as I said. So in my opinion, all discs sold should really come with one because you're going to have to disturb it in order to get the disc off. But these were cheap. So what I did was I ordered two from Autodoc. Again, I'll leave a link. However, I usually try to stay away from Autodoc. The delivery times are about two weeks and I've had wrong parts in order to show up from them. But in this case, these hub nuts were half the price of anywhere else. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, the dust cap, because we were gentle with it, we can reuse that. Okay, next up is pads. Let's get this disc out of the way. Next up is pads. Uh, I picked Brembo. As long as you get a good brand, you should be okay. However, you do need to change the brake hardware over with the pads, which is basically just these clips here. 
The Brembo's come with these, as do many pad sets. You'll also get some new bolts, although usually only two, as that's all you would need if you were just changing the pads. I'm just going to reuse the originals. Again, as with all the parts, I'll leave a link in the description for these. Now, while we're on the subject of these clips, as I mentioned, I do not believe that the old ones that were fitted in there were correct. It was the correct pads, but not the correct uh, clips. Brembo, along with all the other brake component manufacturers, have two pad kits listed in their catalogues. Um, they have different pads and clips in them. The ones we've got here, in the kit that we're going to be fitting on, and the other one listed for the Scenic 3s, is this set. So the clips that we remove from the car come with this set here, which says that it is for long wheelbase Scenics. Now I'm sure what they mean by that is the Grand Scenic, since there are no long wheelbase Scenics. You can see that the ears on these pads are different to the ears on the pads that we're going to be fitting, which are the same as the pads that we removed. So you can see this is the pad that we, well, this is the pad that's identical to the one we removed. The ears are different and you've also got a chamfer on the pad as well. So totally different pads, totally different clips. Now the pads that were fitted and the new ones that we will be fitting do not slide properly in these clips that come with the long wheel base kit, the ones that were also fitted to the car before. Now the pad set that we are going to be fitting, this pad set with the other clips, the clips that I believe should be fitted to it and matches the pads that we actually just removed. On the catalogs it says for vehicles with EPB, it matches the Renault part number for the original pads that were fitted to this vehicle. So unless all the brake manufacturers have got this wrong, then these, the, pad, the clips that were fitted in previously, were the wrong clips with the correct pads. They must have just jammed the pads in there. The clips that come with the correct pads listed for the vehicle on Brembo's parts catalogue, these are the correct clips. Right, let's clear all this off and start building up the caliper bracket. Right, before we start handling our pads, just make sure that your hands haven't got any oil or grease on. As I mentioned, you cannot get oil or grease on the friction material of the pad, otherwise they're just scrapped straight away basically. You can't degrease them once they get oil on them. Now, before we go greasing and rebuilding up this caliper bracket, what I like to do is just dry fit the clips and the pads as well. And the reason I'm going to do this is I want to make sure that the pads are going to slide freely in the bracket. Uh, this is critical. If the pads are bound up from day one, just imagine how bad they're going to be in two years time if they won't slide properly in here now. So I'll fit two of our clips on. This way it just means if we need to do anything about it, we haven't got grease everywhere to contend with. If we just dry fit everything, we'll grease everything up in a minute. So I'll we'll fit two clips on the right way around. And they just clip down and in. And now we'll get two of our pads and we'll see how freely they can slide in these clips. What we're looking for really is just the ability to push these in with pretty much one finger with minimal resistance. So this one is 
sliding nicely in that end. Not so great in here. And this one is very stiff. So if the pads aren't sliding well and you've cleaned under where the clips go in the bracket, then the problem is going to be the pads. Now this is pretty common and it gets completely ignored most of the time. The manufacturing tolerances aren't absolutely perfect and some of the paint that they put on the backing plate in the ears is just oversizing the pads ever so slightly. So the best way to fix this is to just sort of have a look at where the ears, it's the ears that we're, that we're binding on, have a look where they're making contact with those pads. So on these it's going to be along the fronts here and here at the front of the pads on the ears there and there. Now the best thing to do is to just see how they're sliding. We'll start with this one because this one will be easier. I'll show you. So that's not sliding too bad. Actually that one is not too bad. But what I want is a real, still got a bit of grip on it. So we'll just take this out and the easiest thing to do is just come on these pad ears and you'll probably find it's just a bit of excess paint and just file away just a smidge on there. File a little bit, retry them. I know it's time consuming, it's a pain, but trust me, your pads will love you for this. So we'll do a little bit on the other side. I can see that there's just a bit of sort of excess paint on here. Now we'll give them another quick go and see once they've actually started. And what I'm looking for, you want to just be, there's minimal resistance here. You just want to be pushing this down and back with just light finger pressure. That was just it at an angle. But once that will slide freely, then you know you're going to get the maximum service life. We'll just take a little bit off the back as well. Not much. They might think, oh, if I take this paint off, they're going to corrode in place, get rust or whatever. But as they're going through the clips, they're going to lose this anyway if they're, they're tight in there. They will get forced into place and it will just come off anyway. Plus, we'll be greasing it. That's more like it. That's what we're looking for, for it to just ease up. Now you can get them skew ifed over. Obviously they're going to bind up then, but you want to try and keep them straight. And if you can just push it in, literally with just your thumb right the way through, no real pressure. That's just going right the way through those clips. If we put our thumb central, we can just push through. Still a little bit on this one. There we go. Easy peasy. That's what we want, just like that. We'll do the other one now. Right, so after a reasonable bit of filing, we've now got one pad, two pad, sliding nice and freely in the clips. That's exactly what we want to ensure a long service life. Perfect. So now we know these pads are sliding freely. We can go ahead and pull them out, take the clips back off, and then we can get to greasing and building this up. Just be careful pulling your clips back out you use a screwdriver and just persuade each end up. You don't want to bend them if you can avoid it. Right, I'm going to grease this up now. 
Uh, it's important just to remember two things. The slider pins need to be greased with either a grease that specifically says it can be used on slider pins or a silicon grease, silicon paste, which is what comes supplied with slider pins when you buy them new. Uh, second is on the pads themselves and on the clips as well, you need to be using a brake grease, a grease specifically for brakes, Mintex, uh, liquid molly, um, anti squill paste, something similar to that. However, for me today, I'm gonna to be giving something new a try. I've seen these on Amazon for a while now, this uh, Pro Slip kit that comes with three different tubes. Uh, you get clip, pad, pin, uh, each for each individual one. I've never seen a grease that was specifically for the pin. I've watched a bit of their, um, on YouTube they've got a channel and I've watched a bit of their, like, you know, their sort of instructional videos and it really does look like good stuff, so I'm gonna give it a go today, see how it gets on. I'll uh, strip this down again in a year or so just to do a service on it and see how well this grease has fared up. It's just this has been the Amazon choice always at the top every time you search for brake grease, so I thought I'd finally buy it. Again, link in the description. So I'll do the slider pins first, and as I keep mentioning, just bear in mind, don't get any grease on your pads friction material. So with this, according to their videos, you just need a pea-sized amount on your finger, about that much. And then we're just gonna rub it up and down, pull the boot back as far as we can. And we'll just rub this into the pin. You saw how little grease came out, you don't need much. And if you weren't gonna use this Pro Slip kit, just remember, it must be a silicon grease for these. Anything else is gonna eat the rubber boots and then you will just undo everything you've tried to do by greasing them. Copper paste as well will just simply seize these solid. With that done, fit it into the bore. Just run it in a few times. And you can see it's largely deposited that grease down in the bore. And then if we just press forward, it will just pop the boot on. And what you might need to do sometimes, you need to just squeeze that boot, just squeeze it to burp any air that might be in it out. And just make sure it's got good, the boot has got the guide pin and the caliper bracket as well. And do the other one. Not sure how many brake jobs you'd get out of this kit. I'd say a few. I'll, um, I might even do a review on it, but it'll have to be a long-term review because obviously we won't know the results for at least a year or so. Probably more really to get a good idea of how well it performs. And again, just give it a push and a persuade. You hear a nice click, and that needs a burp. Just squeeze that boot. Check it's got on, good, great. Okay, next, we're gonna be greasing the areas on the caliper bracket where the clip is actually gonna go on to. Basically, the reasoning behind this is that this will rust up again, and it'll squeeze those pads, those clips, sorry, and grab onto the pad ears and just, you know, bind them in place. So what you wanna do is put a little brake grease under where these clips will go just to stop this corroding. As for me, I'll be using the clip tube from the Pro Slip kit. And this time I'll be trying to get some on a brush because that is the best way to apply it to these. You don't want much, just a thin 
thin coating if you can see. That's why a brush is the best thing to use for these because then you can get a nice even thin coating everywhere that that's going to sit. Check that you've got into all the nooks and crevices. Do the other side. Perfect. All right, now we fit our clips on. Oh, I missed a spot there. We could come around the fronts. Don't need much more. You don't need to do the sides because obviously that's just where the tangs are going but anywhere where a large area of those clips are actually going to sit you want to do. Now we can fit the clips. Line the tangs up nicely and just push down. Make sure they bottom out and the other one as well. Now we can fit the pads in that we checked over earlier. I will be changing my gloves now because obviously we've got greasy. Uh, currently I grease these in here in the actual clips themselves. Now some people don't, they think it does more harm than good by collecting dirt and brake dust. I've not had any experience seeing that yet so I still grease down in the clips here where the pad will run right down where the ears will run in there and uh, I'll put a little grease on the ears of the pads themselves. Again we're using the Pro Slip clip for this but you could use any kind of brake grease. Just get a little on the brush again and as I said we're just going to go only in where these runs are for the ears of the pads. Do not think we'll need much. Do the other one. We'll just come on these top ends here and up on there as well. Just so everywhere where the pad ear is going to sit got a thin there now I like to fit the pads into the caliper bracket now I just find this to be the easiest way if it's possible obviously some pads are clipped into the piston and whatnot but I like to do it here Again, just get a little smidge of the clip. Handle the pads just by the backing plate. And 
And do the other one as well. As I said, the greasing is something that there's a, gr a lot of varying, differing opinions on. So you do whichever way you like best or think is best. Okay, they're ready to fit. And as I said, we'll just get them in now. And we'll take it over to the car and fit it on when we've got everything else on. I also, you might have noticed, haven't used the pad tube. The reason for that is these pads have got anti-squeal shims on the back which have got a rubber coating on and this pad lubricant from what I watched on YouTube from these guys um, making their promotional videos this is for metal to metal contacts so if you had metal back shims or if you had a pad that didn't have a shim on at all this would be great but this might damage or eat into this shim here and with these shims you don't actually need to have anything on anyway if you wanted to put some just normal brake grease on here you could but I won't be doing that. I'll just be fitting them as they are. Back over at the car now. Uh, first thing back on is the brake disc. Uh, before I do this, I'm gonna put a smidge of grease on the stub axle where the bearing will seat, just to help it stop seizing on. Uh, the manuals don't mention this, but I think it's a good idea. And if this ever needs to come off again, it'll be us doing it. So I'd rather not have to use the hub puller on it. We're gonna be greasing here, none on the threads at all. And I'll just be using a little high temperature bearing grease for this. We're not going to want much, just literally a smidge on our finger that will work all the way around. There was a tiny, tiny bit on here when we removed it, which is probably why it was able to just slide off. I have, these have seized on in the past, have seen that, they can do it, so... A little bit of grease can't go amiss here. As I said, just don't get any, any on the threads or it could affect the torque. I'll just get a smidge on the face of that shoulder there as well. All right, disc now. I did forget to mention over at the bench that some of these discs, the ABS ring, They'll come with like a plastic cover over the top of it for protection. This Ica one didn't, but just make sure you remove it now before you fit it on. And be very careful, watch this ABS ring as you're fitting. Don't smack it into the stub axle. So what I like to do, I'll come in with a slight tilt so we can keep seeing all the way in. That way we know we've cleared it nicely. And we'll just ease on. bottom it down and we'll just make sure it's on give it a quick spin now rotation make sure it's free all right on with the new hub nut or I guess it's axle nut in this case get it started by hand they will feel a little bit tight as we go on straight away because basically if you look at the shape here you'll see it's not a perfect circle that's how they stake themselves on we'll run it in snug with a ratchet yeah going tight now okay now we need to torque this up uh, this is very important as if this comes loose at best you're going to have a horrendous amount of damage and at worst you can crash so i did a fair bit of research into this and there do seem to be two torques floating around for these axle nuts 220 and 280 nm uh, i believe the 220 is for the 30 millimeter hub nut mounted to the mcgann's and smaller models the 280 nm is for the scenics and grand scenics which use the 36 millimeter hub nut 
So 280 Nm for this one and the same precautions go for tightening as with loosening. That's 214. Two six eight. We're up in the air now. There we go. Right, and we'll just give it a spin. Make sure it's free. Sounds good. We'll put the cap, the dust cover, back on now. Whether that's going to be a new one or your old one. Try not to deform these too much. Get them started a little bit, just by hand, so you've got the whole thing going in. And you can use a soft face hammer. Just try not to hit in the center here because that will deform straight in. But just work your way around even. I gave up using the soft face hammer, too much bounce back in it. Just using a ball peen all nicely around the edge, just be careful of the brake disc. There we go. Now I'm going to give the brake disc a good clean. Uh, this is a critical step as some of these discs come with oils on to stop them rusting while they are in the box. Now we might need to do this again later if we get a smudge on the disc, but this gets the worst of it off. Bit of shop towel, the drain pan back under. Mainly what we want to get is the actual working area of the disc, but you can just put your hand on the outside and just rotate the disc through to get it on there. We'll do the top hat, because why not? There you go, see that's what you get off. And on the back side as well. Not so easy to get all the way around, so give it a spin. Put a little on the rag as well. Right, our dressed up caliper bracket can go back on now. I've given both these caliper bracket bolts a clean up. Uh, they need Loctite on them. Now I'm going to be using Loctite 243. Link in the description. Just a dollop on them. So we'll pass the caliper bracket over the brake disc. Obviously our pads are fitted in, that's the way around I was doing it. If yours aren't, we fit them in after this. Start both these bolts just by hand. Bottom one. Snug them in with a ratchet. Just whip that glove off, give the disc a quick rotate. Obviously I've already checked, but just make sure there's good clearance on the disc. Our clips, our bracket aren't contacting it. Can't imagine why they would, but you want to find out now, not later. 
and the torque for these caliper bracket bolts is 80 Nm. Alright, caliper back on next. Now, new caliper guide pin bolts come with thread lock already applied on them, but I'm reusing the old ones, so I'll put some fresh Loctite 243 on. Again, just a dollop. Oh, not that much. Let's share that out. This stuff ain't cheap. And before we fit that, just push your pads into contact with the disc. Then we can unhook the caliper from the hook. If we can unhook it. There we go. And then I like to get the top one in first usually, but there's not a lot of, probably because of the EPB wiring, not a lot of slack here, so we might as well just get it, get it straight on. Get your piston behind that pad and the ears in front. Press your pins in and get that down. Usually you can just put the top one in and hinge them down, which is the way I like to do it, but because of the EPB motor on the back, can't do that on this one. Listen for that click as we backtrack. Good way to not cross thread things. Run that one in by hand. Grab the other. Run them down with the ratchet, such as we can get on. So the way I'm getting in on these is just with a wobble short extension, especially for the top one to get around that brake line. And I'm coming in from the underside on it. And I need, again, 15 mil spanner. Talk these up in a minute. Just be careful of that brake line on the top. That one's good. Let's get these torqued. And the torque for these caliper guide pin bolts is 35 Nm. Not easy to get on this top one nicely. Just try and keep that socket square on there. There 
There we go. And the bottom one's a lot easier. There we go. And with the caliper back on, don't forget to remount the EPB wiring into its little clip. Just not so easy with the camera in the other hand, but you will have two hands, of course. Get it into the bracket, and then, as I said, they just sort of ratchet closed. There we go, that's got it. Right, grab everything out from under the car. Make sure you haven't left any tools or anything like that, or anything sharp, particularly under the tire. Ask me how I know about that one. Okay, wheel back on. Five seventeen mils. We'll talk them up when we're on the ground. Pinch up with a ratchet for now. Not going to be so easy as it usually is without the handbrake on. Alrighty, that's this side finished now. We need to do the other side. It's exactly the same as this one, like I said. So I'm just gonna blaze through that off camera and if I run into any problems, anything different, especially with that outboard pad, I'll show you that. Got the caliper off on this side. That pad, outboard one, completely worn down, but just, if you can hear this. Hopefully we're picking that up on the mic. And then the bottom slide pin it's not seized, it's very <coughs> stiff in the bracket, so that's certainly not helping. Once I've got the bracket off, we'll see how jammed that pad is into the hardware as well, but this <sighs> has not been helping. That bottom one, very stiff. So we'll see if these are actually scored up. If they are, I'll fit a new slide pin kit. If they're savable, I'll just grease them up properly. So the outboard pad, I managed to get it out by hand. I mean, it was stiff in there. That's the one that's worn right down. It was stiff, but I did manage to get it out by hand. But the <laughs> inboard pad, just take a look at that. Completely seized in there. We're gonna have to knock that out. Get it moving. Sheesh. Yeah, shouldn't be like that. Okay, so I think we may have found the actual cause of our problem here. I bet you can guess what it is already. We get lined up with a brake pad. And if you just watch here, as we start to push, you saw how easily the other one went in. We're just bending, this is deflecting now, and that piston has no plans on going in. So most likely, this caliper is seized. Before we just condemn this, there are some tests to do first, but I am pretty sure it will be seized. This will be a separate video, so if this happens to you, you can check out my video to diagnose and replace the calipers on these. Card up on the screen now and link in the description. You're just gonna see a shiny new caliper on here in a minute. This bracket's all cleaned. Let's get a look at what's holding these sliders up. This one sounds as if it's scored or something inside there. And this top one is kind of dragging. Let's 
look at this top one first. That boot's stuck on there. Ah, right. Look at this one. This is why you don't use copper slip on these. Apart from it eating the boot, it also, it just dries out on there, if you can see that, and it causes the pin to gum up the exact thing you'd be putting grease on here to prevent against. This is why you must use silicon grease or something that is specifically designed for these pins. Fit that one back in there for a sec. Let's have a look at this bottom one. Now on this one, the grease is still that's still fine. Don't know what kind of grease has gone on here, but as I say, something's going on in there. I'll just give it a wipe down and see whether it has actually picked up or been scored. Might not pick it out on the camera, but there is some scoring on there. Fretting, I think it's called. That is not ideal. We can definitely hear it in that bore. So these pins are too far gone, in my opinion. You have to really wipe the copper slip off there and it leaves a residue even then. These are too far gone to clean up really, especially with that boot being contaminated. Now I've got a new kit. This is from brakeparts.com. As I mentioned earlier, get the part number off their website by putting in your number plate, then check their eBay for the very best prices. The part number for these ones is BCF1346 and I'll leave a link in the description for them. And also in this kit, worthwhile noting you get your pins and your boots and some new bolts as well but what you also get is this little sachet and in here silicon grease so I'll change these pins out boots out clean the bores grease them up nice sticky pins seized pads and a seized caliper that's all three no wonder that outboard pad died quick okay I'm just editing this video and I just wanted to come out to the garage to shoot this just because I realized I didn't really go back and revisit what's actually happened with this side that's caused this uh, this failure and it's actually a really interesting failure. Now what's happened on this driver's side I said at the start of the video that what usually causes this is the pad cannot back off the disc uh, but as we saw when we removed the pads they were free, this, uh, this outboard pad was free in the sliders and the slide pins themselves were free as well. This could move in the clip and the slide pins were letting it back off too. Now, I did not actually suspect a seized caliper at all, uh, hence why I had a bit of a delay picking one up because that will normally wear down the inboard pad first. Now this is the outboard, outboard on the left, inboard on the right. This is the outboard pad here, you can see is right down to the backing plate. And the inboard pad on this side that was against that seized caliper, if you can see there, that's got a huge amount of meat left on it, huge amount of friction material. If we compare that to the one on the other side, which incidentally these two are worn down essentially even, as even as can be expected. But if we compare that one against the inboard pad on that side, again, almost double a huge amount of friction material left in comparison to that one. So this one has been seized and not moving for a long time on that driver's side. So that pad, the inboard pad on the driver's side is actually the thickest one of all. So I'm gonna guess that it has uh, seized in the clips. And then obviously what's been happening is the caliper has been putting all of the braking force all of the effort just into that outboard pad, which could still move because you've got the piston pushing against the back of here. Even though this pad won't move, it'll still draw in the outboard pad on the sliders and it's just been nailing that outboard pad. And of course, because the caliper itself is seized, it's not gonna back off and allow this to 
back off very far, if at all. That's just not been helping matters whatsoever. So I'm gonna guess this one's just been up against the disc constantly and it's just, that's why that's evaporated in such a short space of time. I really don't feel quite so bad about not spotting that now. And it does explain how this was able to just disappear so very, very quickly. Back to our regular programming now. All right, that's this side sorted now. Shiny new disc, pads, pins, and caliper. A few final bits to sort out here and we'll be all done. Firstly, and very easily forgotten, refit the cap on the master cylinder. Just make sure the level is good, at least at the min mark. We'll do a final check when the car's actually level and on the ground. Okay, very important, do not, she's not happy with us, do not forget this step. You need to pump the brake pedal until you have a brake pedal. That's just bringing the pistons back into contact with the new brake pads. The first few pedal applications will just be making that distance up between the piston and the new pad. So pump the brake pedal until you have a brake pedal. All right, now we deactivate maintenance mode on the rear brakes, key into the key card holder, diagnostics, Renault. We do need to be quick because the start stop, the ignition will time out on us if we're not careful. Just go straight into service. Electronic parking brake, configure function, deactivate maintenance mode. There we are, all done. Key card out. Now what we'll do just quick, we'll give her a quick test. What I like to do now for both sides, just give it a quick test with the brake pedal off, check the wheel spinning free, brake pedal applied, lock solid and released, spinning again, check the other side, spinning free, brake pedal applied, stop solid, released, spinning again, handbrake on, Locked, and the other side. Locked, handbrake released. Spinning, and the other side. Spinning, perfect. Right, both sides done. Wheels back on. Quick check underneath. All clear, nothing left under there. Let's lower her back down to the ground. Okay, with the car down and level, Give your master cylinder a check over, make sure you're up to the max marks as these pads wear, fluid's only going one way. All right, drop the bonnet. Check we've not left anything in here. Easy enough to do on a job like this where you're not actually working on the engine. And torque the wheels up. These are 17 mil and 100 and 10 nm on these. One. Two.
three, four, five. All right then guys, that's this job finished on this car. Now don't forget to take your car out for a quick test drive and bed the brakes in according to the manufacturer's, the pad manufacturer's instructions. Very important that. Now if you've enjoyed this video, it's helped you out at all, please hit that like button for me. If you'd like to see more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. You can find me over on Instagram, at Sockets and Sideburns. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Now you didn't think I'd forget, did you? So this is our ABS ring here. Now the way we get this off is we need to get underneath it in this gap here with something thin enough to get in there but also we want it to be as wide as possible like this chisel is here so that it spreads the force so that we don't deform the ring. You can use a screwdriver but just make sure it's as wide as possible. If we concentrate the force in too small an area when we're trying to push this up then we could deform it like a warped record. So I'm going to use a chisel for this and we want to set it into that gap and then come up onto the lip that's the ABS ring there and we're not going to be hitting the chisel or screwdriver whatever you're using in, we're going to be hitting down on the back to force the ABS ring up and off. And what we'll do, we'll start, get yourself a reference point on the disc that you can see, so I'm going to use the two circlip points in here that you'd use to get the circlip out on the bearing and start there and then we're going to hit the back of the chisel with the hammer down and we're going to, once we've got this moving slightly, we'll 180 the disc and go on the opposite side and then we'll just keep an eye on which bits are coming up, which bits are staying down and we'll also always be hitting the lowest point, the bit that's still in the most contact with the disc to try and drive this off without bending it one way or the other. Right. We'll hold the chisel firmly in and we'll just start off, keep an eye, see if it moves at all, that hasn't even moved, strike it again and then give it a 180 and hit the other side. and then perhaps 90 degrees, just trying to bring it up even. Yeah, we've definitely got some movement on it now. I'm gonna go 180 again. There we go, that really came up that time. This could be the last one. Hey! Right, so that's it off. Now, before you go ahead and transfer this onto your new one, you might wanna consider, that's why I don't really recommend doing this. You can see all the corrosion that's down inside there. I don't really recommend transferring these over, but you're gonna to wanna to clean off any corrosion that's down inside this ABS ring here to ensure a good snug fit. That face is quite clean, it's just up in here. You can do that with a bit of scotch cloth or something like that, just try and get it as clean as you can. And then the top side, where they've got this rubber band, that's actually where the magnetic part of it, this is that the sensor's reading off of, but that is rubber, so just give that a wipe over with a rag at most. Do not touch it with a magnet, because it'll wipe it wipe the uh, magnetic readers out of this straight away, but just give it a wipe over something. I wouldn't use any brake cleaner or anything like that because it is rubber, so it could deteriorate. Now, let's just pretend, try to use your imagination, that this is your brand new shiny disc that you're fitting your ABS ring onto that you got off your old one. All you need to do to fit it, line it up nicely in the first place and just start it off just with your hand. Try and get it going down, have a look down, 
and try and get it going down as even as you can. Now if there's still a gap, which there probably will be, then just get yourself a nice piece of wood that's big enough to cover the entire ABS ring and that's obviously flat as well. Put that on there and then get yourself a hammer with a bit more mass behind it and just give it a few even taps. You should feel a very dead feeling to the blow once the ring is all the way seated down. And you can just have a look around the inside where that ring is down, the rubber part of the ring. If you see here, it's up against the disc itself. You just have a look around, make sure that rubber is all the way down against it, all the way around, which it is. And we can just get our magnetic field paper and just run all the way around, make sure we don't have any damaged segments from us bashing it, which we do not. So that's ready to go.